So, uh, so Great Guns is my company. Uh, we're a telemarketing company, as Matthew said. Um, not a, a company that sell guns. Um, we got a huge amount of hits on our site from Afghanistan and, and places like that. It's a real pain because they don't buy telemarketing and we can't flog them arms. Um, we <laughs> let me let me. Um, I'll tell you, uh, what, what we do is cold calling. So we actually spend our time on the phone ringing you up in your business to make appointments for clients in all sorts of different industry sectors. But it's only business to business. So we're not those irritating people who bother you when you're serving the carrots at dinner time. Um, so we work on behalf of some of the UK's biggest brands, clients like PricewaterhouseCoopers, Accenture, BDO, PayPal, Weller, uh, BMW, anyone you can think of really. As long as they have a requirement for appointments, we can help them, startups as well as blue tip multinationals. Um, so how did I get it started? Let me tell you a bit about my academic background because that'll take about a second. Um, <laughs> I went to uh, an ordinary school. Um, I'm, I'm blind now, but I wasn't blind then. And I studied GCSEs. I was naff at school, absolutely awful. I found school very unentertaining, which is why I'm such a, a big fan of what, you know, this old Alan Sugar thing on the telly at the moment, apprenticeships. Because the workplace for me is an in incredible place. School was the most incredibly boring place. Um, I only found subjects good when there was a charismatic teacher. So my favourite subject at school was drama, which I got a GCSE in. Unfortunately, I failed in all the other nine. Um, <laughs> I then went to college, um, couldn't think of anything to do there really, so did some retakes. Um, and then I started off on a YTS placement, an apprenticeship. And um, I think this, is, this has been a lesson to me actually, because I worked for an entrepreneur. Um, and he was just the most incredible person to work alongside, and I really appreciated being his apprentice. Um, he, he was on his third successful business. The other two had already sold off to Thompson Publishers. Um, and I had the opportunity to start as an office junior for him. The unfortunate thing is my spelling was terrible, um, so that didn't last that long before he said, hey, I've heard you answer the phone. You sound pretty good. How do you fancy a go at making some calls? So, and do you know what? The minute I picked up the telephone, I thought, this job is incredible. <laughs> Who likes cold calling? So, you see, you know, it's a niche thing. Not many people like doing it. And I worked there doing that for a while, and then he said, go and do it in America for us. You know, we want to launch our business over in America. So I went and worked in Chicago. And then I got back and I thought, do you know what? And it's probably in a similar position to 25% of you here. I want to do it for myself. So I went to see that boss who'd become a great friend and said, Dave, I've loved working for you, but this is what I want to do. Um, and he said, do you know what? I absolutely think you can do that. And I'll tell you what would be your first client. I then did a horrible thing. I went to see the bank manager. <laughs> Don't lose heart. <laughs> they were mean then, they're mean now. Nothing's changed. In fact, they're probably meaner now. Um, <laughs> but he did give me a bit of advice when he uh, said he, no. He said, go and see the Prince's Trust. And I did that. And, um, you know, if you're under 25, you know, consider that as an option. Um, um, and then I started the, the company in my flat in amazing Stoke, um, you've been, <laughs> uh, but I started there. Um, so to bring you up to date now, we've got six branch offices, we turn over around about three million quid. Um, we employ about 130 telemarketers across, across the UK, and I do love it. It's fun, I love it, I love the people I work with. Um, some of the best leverages to success for us, um, and it was great to, um, hear both Laura and Dee mention it, is business awards um, and winning business awards. If you're, you know, if you're a startup, if you're in the, in the middle of your, your business, wherever you are, enter business awards. It's free of charge, right? Not, not ever so many people go in for them. That's supposed to be a trade secret, but it's the truth. So you stand a better than average chance of winning. <laughs> 
Um, and the publicity is incredible. The message that it sends out is great because your competitors generally aren't winning awards. So, you know, you're already better than they are in, you know, people's eyes. Your staff love it. You know, the dinners are great. We've had loads of free dinners on business awards. In fact, it paid for one Christmas party one year. Um, <laughs> uh, so you get, you get all of that. And plus, prospects read the papers. We get loads of inquiries from people who read about business success. So if you're not in business awards, go in for them. One, one that we won was uh, Women Mean Business. I think they've renamed it Mean Women in Business after I won. <laughs> Um, but I've, uh, we, we were in just about most tabloids afterwards. One of the funniest pieces of coverage that we got and one of the best bits of brand leverage that we got was the Institute of Directors publisher magazine called The Director. Do you know it? Um, and they have a, a slot in it called Entrepreneur of the Month. Um, and the month before it was uh, me, it was Dyson. <laughs> Doesn't get much better. I also got a phone call um, after winning that award from Dubai, and they, uh, it was uh, women, women Entrepreneurs Dubai. Actually, it wasn't women, it was just Entrepreneurs Dubai. And, uh, and uh, they said, uh, Liz Jackson, we would like you to come and speak at our conference. And I, oh, I'd never spoken at a conference before. And I said, who else is speaking? I said, Stelios, uh, Donald Trump, uh, and Damon Eats Roddick. <laughs> oh, right. Um, I said, yes, of course, because I thought free holiday. <laughs> Fantastic, first class flights. They're putting us up in the Emirates Towers. It was two days. Excellent. Um, but I put down the phone and thought, well, they, they definitely wanted another Liz Jackson. But I thought, I'll blag it, you know, free holiday. Um, <laughs> But I said to my PA, get on the internet, find out which Liz Jackson they meant to book, just so I know who I'm supposed to be <laughs> on the day. <laughs> and, um, and we couldn't find another Liz Jackson, but we did find out that I'm one of the ladies that Jack the Ripper murdered. <laughs> just want to leave you with a few pieces of advice before I finish. Don't be a nearly man or woman. I don't know if you, have anyone heard of a nearly man or woman? I'll tell you what a nearly man or woman is, and if you sit next to one today, I'm sorry for you, because they are the people who will bore you stupid with all the things they nearly did in their lives. <laughs> Do you know what? We almost sailed around the world last year. <laughs> really? How interesting. <laughs> you know, it's not, is it? It's, you know, one of my favourite books of all time is Losing My Virginity, um, by, uh, not that kind of book, by Richard Branson. And it's his failures. I love reading about the balloon that crashed. You know, it's, that, it's the failures that are the most interesting parts of his story in, in some facts. So, you know, don't be a nearly man or woman. We only live for about 80 years on this planet. Ladies, we live longer than the men. <laughs> Hurrah. Make every single day count. You know, it's better to love and lose than never to have loved at all. Pull your finger out and get on with it. You know, it's a better story to tell on your deathbed. Um, a bit gloomy. Um, my second piece of advice is whatever you do, do not rely on luck. There isn't such a thing as luck. I'll tell you what luck is. Luck is where hard work meets opportunity. If you work hard, the opportunities will come. The difference between people who are successful and those who aren't is the successful ones have just learned to identify opportunities when they come into their vision. And what they do when they see them, they grab them, they leap on them, they don't let them go until they've seen their dream come true. And my last piece of advice is something that my dad told me as I was growing up. It's something that we've had plastered all over our office walls and it's something that I love to repeat when I get the huge honour that it is to stand in front of entrepreneurs like yourselves. And it's something that Henry Ford said a long time ago. If you think you can or you think you can't, you're absolutely right. Thanks. <laughs>